Benvenuti e benvenute. Sono la dottoressa Ranocchia dello staff qualità e comunicazione della USD Umbria 1. I enjoin you all to follow this video attentively in order to better, better understand the situation in which we've all found our, ourselves because of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. It is a new and difficult situation for us all and a good understanding of how we should comport ourselves would go a long way in helping us overcome the situation. Let's begin with the most important thing, which is to understand the meanings of some words we often hear. When we talk of pandemic, we mean a situation whereby an illness caused by a virus is rapidly spread among people in different parts of the world, even in places far apart. The coronavirus has struck in all the continents and you will surely have heard news from your various countries of origin. As at today, worldwide, millions of cases and millions of deaths are being recorded. In Italy, we have recorded more than a million cases from the beginning of the pandemic with thousands of deaths. During the first wave of the pandemic here in Umbria, the virus was under control, but presently it is rapidly spreading. Hundreds of cases are being recorded daily in Umbria and the doctors are having a hard time following up with all the sick. It is highly important to note that if the hospitals are full of a coronavirus patients, even if they are not serious cases, they will not be able to take care of others who have the need. Above all, the serious cases who need to be admitted into the intensive care for those who lack oxygen in their blood and go into respiratory crisis due to the virus. So, our daily actions can actually help the doctors in the hospitals continue their work and that way we are assured of their presence when we need them. The problem with the coronavirus, a virus similar to that of the flu, is that it is completely new to the human body. So the body does not have enough immunity against it. This is especially true in people who have a weaker immune system, like the elderly or people with underlying health problems. For many people, the coronavirus does not cause a lot of damage, but it is important to understand that it is highly contagious. That is, it passes very easily from one person to the other. This means that together, we all must strive to protect ourselves and those around us with the right habits of prevention. What is the meaning of prevention? It simply means doing things or putting into practice actions that help us not to become infected, thereby slowing down the spread of the virus. Following are some, um, are some simple but very important rules. The first rule is on the use of the face mask. This is because the virus travels from person to person through the air and saliva droplets from our mouth while we talk, sing, sneeze, cough or shout. The most common type of face mask is called the surgical mask. It protects only if I have mine and you have yours and we all use it contemporarily. So, if we all make use of it, we are all protected. But if one person in a group does not use it, he or she puts himself or herself and others at risk. Other types of masks are those called the FFP2, which is more protective and is in fact used by doctors and those who need it due to the nature of their work. It is also recommended for those with underlying illnesses or those at risk. The fabric masks can only protect if there is a filter inside of it and they must be washed and disinfected often. In any case, for the mask to perform its intended, in, its intended function, it must cover both the nose and the mouth. Otherwise, it is of no use. 
The second rule is to maintain a distance of at least one meter between people. This rule is for those who do not live together. It is a fundamental rule, though difficult to keep. In fact, presently, it is not possible to do a lot of things like gathering as a group, hugging, shaking, using the same plates, cup, bottles, and cutlery. The third rule is to wash the hands often with soap and water or alcohol-based gel because they help to disinfect. This is to be done both in and outside of the home, especially when you have touched the doors of stores, seats or parts of buses or trains, or when you are in public places. It is also important to remember that aside washing the hands often, we should not touch the mouth, eyes and nose. Doing this would be a way of helping the virus have easy access into our bodies. Washing of the hands often is important, most of all after using the bathroom, before and after eating, and before and after touching food meant for yourself or others. Since the coronavirus is transmitted from one person to another through the air and saliva droplets, it is highly important to cough or sneeze in a disposable napkin or the internal bend of the elbow. The napkin should be well disposed of. This is to avoid having the droplets in the air such that other people will not breathe them in. One last very important thing is to frequently clean where we live, be it a shared room, a small apartment, or other form of accommodation, even if it is temporary. It is important to clean properly with chlorine or alcohol-based product. If we all follow these rules, the virus would have a very hard time getting to us, to our loved ones, and especially the more fragile people. Unfortunately, in as much as we try to be very careful, getting the virus is still very possible. In some cases, you could have notable symptoms, that is, signals sent by the body to make us understand that there is something wrong. These signals are mostly fever, nausea, a great sense of tiredness and general body pain, loss of the sense of smell and the sense of taste. Often, the symptoms don't all come together. So, if you have any of these symptoms, it is important to inform your doctor or the doctor of the camp where you live or the pediatrician for children below the ages of 14 years. It is important not to go to the emergency room, also known as the pronto socorro, or to call the ambulance. Because as we said earlier, the hospitals are having a very difficult time. If it is in the evening or the weekend or on a holiday when your doctor does not work, call the Continuous Assistance Service, also known as the Guardia Medica. It is the doctors who will decide if you need to go to the hospital or not. It is good to know that most of the time, the, vi the virus goes away without needing any cure. In some cases, you could get the virus and not have any notable sim symptoms. In this case, it is possible to know if one is, is infected only through a swab test, and this is requested for by the doctor. So, what is a swab test or tampone? It is a very simple examination that is done even on children without any problems. It is a thin looking stick with a soft end that is passed in the throat or in the nose and then analyzed in the lab to check for the presence of the virus. The result is known after some days and it could come out positive or negative. 
if one is positive but feels well and does not have any symptoms, he or she is said to be positive asymptomatic, that is, having the virus but without symptoms. Please note, those who are positive and asymptomatic can transmit the virus to any and everyone. That is why it is very, very important that such people are completely isolated from others. The swab test is done on those who have no symptoms when it is certain that they have been in contact with an infected person. Please remember that the virus is no respecter of persons, but in a large number of cases, it goes away by itself. The virus is in circulation, and so getting infected is a possibility. It is neither a fault nor a punishment, but an illness that would surely go away. It does not remain forever. Every positive person is put in isolation. That is, they can't come in contact even with the people they live with. However, 10 days from the swab test or the first symptoms, another swab test will be done. And if this comes out negative, the person can continue with their normal day-to-day -day activities. If it comes back positive, the isolation period becomes 21 days. What we call quarantine is in fact a 15-day period from the moment of contact with an infected person. If a swab test is done after 10 days and comes back negative, the person can end their period of quarantine. The difference between isolation and quarantine is that isolation is for those who definitely have the virus, while quarantine is for those who have had direct contact with an infected person, but are not sure if they got infected or not. When we talk of direct contact, we mean being with a person within the last 48 hours of discovering that they are infected either through a swab test or symptoms. In any case, it is important to always remember that it is the doctors who decide on what to do based on each case. Also because the rules change based on how rapidly the virus moves at a given time. Also, if there are many people who have to do a swab test at the same time, it is possible that there would be a waiting period of a few days. At this time, many scientists all over the world are studying and experimenting with a vaccine. That is a medicine that would be the solution to not getting this virus. It is very important to trust the doctor's indications. It could also be necessary to have to move from your own home to another structure if you do not have the possibility of being completely isolated. But there is no cause for alarm. The movements are controlled and assistance and support is guaranteed. The structures that have been chosen for this temporary moves are adapted to host people for the necessary period of time after which they can return to their homes. It is important to remember that these rules are being decided upon by the government and the various regions like Umbria to safeguard the health of all. So, some rules are valid in all of Italy while some are different from one region to the other, meaning a valid rule in Umbria may not exist in another region. So it is possible to hear our friends living in other parts of Italy speak of some rules that are different from ours. The rules change continuously because there are experts who give indications to the government on how best to go about trying to limit the spread of the virus. In any case, it is always important to stay informed on the rules and follow them because though they may not be simple to follow, but they are made to guarantee the health of everyone. If the rules are not obeyed, there is the risk of getting a fine. Or in the case of not obeying the rules guiding the quarantine, there is the risk of having a criminal or penal case because the, it means that one 
goes against the Italian law and the rules for the protection of everybody's health. With the change in everyday laws, we also have changes in the rules guiding the reception centers or camps. This means that most of the things you used to do can no longer be done in the same way. The situation we have today, the world over, is not easy, especially because we are being asked to change some everyday habits, like being with other people. It is normal to get tired of those rules, but it is also important to have a lot of patience while trying to overcome this moment. If you need to have any more information to understand some things better or to affront specific problems, you could contact any of the indicated services. Con questo è tutto eh, e vi voglio fare un saluto e raccomandarvi di seguire tutte le indicazioni che vengono date dai nostri eh, medici e dal nostro governo. Arrivederci.